everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this beautiful 5x7 wreath card. I shared the 6x6 a couple of weeks ago. It's been very popular and that stamp set in particular that I used within that card has been very, very popular and I know many of you have that. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it up here. It's a really nice one and if you prefer a 6x6 size then you may want to check that one out. But this one is using the brand new Butterfly Kisses Dovecraft collection and it's stunning and I wanted to fussy cut all of these butterflies. You don't need to do any fussy cutting if you don't want to so don't worry and create a 5 by 7 version so let me show you how I've made it so this is the beautiful butterfly kisses paper pad I've got the 8 by 8 it's beautiful I just adore it so I have fussy cut all of these butterflies from one of the sheets now if you have the 12 by 12 obviously they'll be bigger if the 6 by 6 again they're going to be smaller so they may be a bit more fiddly but I found the 8 by 8 are just that perfect size if you don't want to fussy cut these and you can use obviously any butterflies or anything you want as I've mentioned before the one that I made in the 6 by 6 was all craft related stamps that I'd cut so you know these cards work well with a lot of different images but you can also use this on your scan and cut if you have something like that to cut it out for you so I've gone ahead and cut all of those, it didn't take me long at all and I haven't left a border on these and I've cut off the antenna and any parts of the body that were just fiddly because you're not, you, know, you don't need to worry about all of that so I just made them as easy as I could for myself. I've got a couple of bits there to decorate so I've already gone ahead and cut this piece here which is a piece of 5 by 7 and I've just scored along the 7 inch side at 3.5 to fold it in half so that's the bottom of our card. Then I've got these dies here. Now I've already gone ahead, so I've used, if you've got the Card Making Magic A5 oval dies, I always use these ones, then I've used the one, two, three, four, five, the sixth and the eighth, okay, from the smallest up. And the size of those are, so the smallest one's the most important one because that's the one that's gonna cut into the cardstock. So that is about five and a quarter by three inches, okay. Then with that, other size, bigger, I've cut that, put both of them together and cut them to create these frames here and that's what I'm going to stick over the top. But it's the smallest one that you will always cut into your cardstock first. The largest one basically would just give you a frame. So I can get rid of all of that now because I've cut my two frames but I just wanted to show you how to do that. So with the smaller one, so it doesn't matter what shape you might be using a rectangle here, it may be the circle version that I've already shared, it's entirely up to you. Now I want to bring it up, I know it's still going to fit in my envelope but I want to be able to, on the back really, this is going to be the space to write um, a small message. So, And I'm just going to lay this die down, make sure you've got an equal amount on each side there. I think that's about Right, and I'm just going to tack that in place. This bit I'm not going to need, so it doesn't matter if that does stick to it. And I'm just going to run that through my die machine. Now, because I've got a white cardstock here, I'm just going to put a sheet of copy paper over the top and then put my plate on. That way, if you've got any kind of indents on your plate, they're not going to go through onto your nice cardstock. Okay, so I've just taken that all away. It's cut through perfectly. And then I'm going to stick the frame that I'd already cut over the top and you'll see the inside piece will line up perfectly with what you've just cut into your cardstock and this is just a frame but I would say you do want your frame to be, what's that, yeah half an inch because you want there to be a nice amount of surface space to be able to stick whatever it is that you're attaching so all I'm going to do is I'm going to use the cloud glue and I've done two so that the back I'm going to be putting that strip of acetate through the middle by having the two it just kind of sandwiches them together and just tidies everything up on the back for when the person turns the card over. So I'm going to lay that one down there and then I've got a sheet of acetate here which is the width of the widest point so whatever size or shape whatever it is you're using so mine's three and three quarters maybe bring it in a little bit just so it doesn't pop out the edges but now I'm going to use some red tape and this is just some acetate from some packaging and I'm just going to stick that, I've got the tape on either end and I'm just going to stick it in the centre of the oval like so. Okay, is that a little bit crooked? Possibly but you're not really going to notice it and I'll make sure the sentiment's straight anyway. Then with this one I'm going to pop it back over the top again so you'll see now on the back it's going to cover up that acetate and the tape but I'm going to pop another bit of tape just over the acetate part because the liquid glue will just take quite a long time to dry over that section otherwise but I just want there to be 
some adhesive so that it will stick and then I'm just going to use the Kalau glue again and I'm just going to go all the way around the frame and all up there and then I'm just going to stick that over at the top again just making sure it lines up nicely like so and that's just going to strengthen as that dries and you'll see now that's going to open up like so I'm not worried about the back you could fold that like so you don't want to put a fold on the front but it doesn't matter about the back now it's all ready for me to start attaching my butterflies now I have put a little bit of red tape all around them what I would suggest as I mentioned when I done the 6x6 version is kind of start placing everything where you want to put it so I always lay the largest kind of butterflies down first kind of get them equally spaced I do that one up there actually and then start laying down the next size down of whatever it is that you're using and then finish with the smallest ones which you'll be able to just kind of you know fill in any gaps with so I'm just going to spend a minute kind of laying this all down and then I'm going to stick it down and take a photo of it so then you've got something to revert to as you are sticking it all back down again. So I've now finished the card. I think it's come together really nicely. What I ended up doing is I just thought just for a little bit more interest, I've added one of the acetate butterflies at the very top there. And that's from the holographic butterflies. So you get quite a few there. What I've been doing is I actually take off the top layer. So you really, you've got double the amount of butterflies to the top one. And it gives you this quite realistic looking butterfly. And then you have this sticker with a holographic frame. Otherwise you can just take the whole thing off together and you have really nice stickers but just to make it go a little bit further that's what I've been doing then I added one of the bows from the 20 mini bows and I popped that at the bottom there again just for some nice texture and then the sentiment is from the sentiment toppers that all match and I've gone for the with love now because I've added that frame all the way around the bag it actually supports this really well it doesn't slide open because that's obviously kind of keeping it together there I also just used a little half inch punch there just to cover the foam just to tidy it up a little bit and I had one extra butterfly because it was the one that was there so I decided to pop it on the back and then I will be able to write a message inside the card there You've got enough room to stamp something if you want and you can always write on the top here as well but one other little thing I've just added is these three really pretty glitter gems here they're faceted and they've just got every colour you can think of inside them there. There's one that's fallen off, so we'll pop those away. So that's the finished 5x7 wreath card. You could also spritz this with some glitter spray, which I may well do, just to really add some sparkle 
to all of those butterflies I think that would definitely work but I'm really pleased with this one I hope you like the 5x7 version like I said if you haven't do check out the 6x6 if you prefer that size and it also just gives you inspiration on how to use you know something that isn't butterflies and their stamped images as well so thanks for watching as always everything will be linked in the description box below don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so you get a notification every time I upload a video thanks for watching bye